Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PSE Stock Market Webinar. I'm John Garcia from the PSE's Market Education Department. We're glad to have you with us. So we have a very special topic for you this afternoon. So we will talk about um, beginning or starting a career in the Philippine stock market. You see, guys, being a stockbroker in the Philippines means being in an industry governed by the Securities and Exchange Commission of the Philippines or the SEC. So under the SEC's Capital Market Professionals Program, aspiring brokers would need to undergo a certification seminar and pass the Securities Representative Certification Exam or the SRCE in order to obtain their license. So for today's um, PSE Stock Market Webinar, we have invited distinguished resource speakers from the SEC. Our resource speakers will guide aspiring market professionals on how to start their career as a licensed stockbroker in the Philippines. So are you guys ready? Because I am. All right. Please note that this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. This should not be construed as a professional, financial, or investment advice or recommendation from the PSE. So we won't talk about investments in this webinar, this afternoon's webinar. We'll talk about how to start your career in the Philippine stock market. Okay, so before I introduce our resource speaker, let me share with you a short video about the PSE Certified Security Specialist course. So this is a key investor education initiative of the PSE. Please note that this is not equivalent to the licensure uh, training and exam being conducted by the exchange. But if you want to take this, you know, um, this will help you in um, expanding your knowledge about the stock market. So this is good for investors who would like to uh, enhance their investment, trading, and analytical skills. Also recommended for um, uh, aspiring stockbrokers and capital market uh, practitioners. So please um, watch this video. The Certified Security Specialist course is a key investor education initiative of the Philippine Stock Exchange in partnership with reputable educational institutions in the Philippines. Since its inception in 2007, the program has produced over 700 graduates, of which a good number pursued a career in the Philippine securities market. The Certified Security Specialist course is a 124-hour program featuring seasoned market practitioners and industry experts as lecturers on the following subjects. Organization of financial and equities markets. Analysis and use of financial statements. Quantitative methods of finance. Macroeconomics. Valuation. Fundamental and technical analysis. Risk management. Fixed income and bond market. Raising capital in the capital markets. Introduction to Derivatives Portfolio Management Ethics Securities Regulation and Recent Developments in the Capital Markets The program is designed for individuals who already have the basic understanding of stock investing and would like to manage his or her own portfolio. Taking the CSST is also ideal for aspiring stockbrokers and capital markets professionals who want to enhance their investment, trading, and analytical skills. Complete all requirements, pass all exams, and get your industry-recognized PSE Certified Security Specialist title. Like and follow PSE's official social media account and email PSE's Market Education Department at academy at pse.com.ph to know more about the Certified Security Specialist course. So there you have it, guys, the PSE Certified Security Specialist course. We will be launching the first online CSSC, so watch out for that. The announcement will be made on June 1, Tuesday next week. Okay, moving on to our uh, webinar proper. Our first resource speaker is the Assistant Director and Head of SEC's External Trading Training Division um, under the Economic Research and Training Department. So his division is specifically mandated to conduct the certification seminars and examinations for prospective market professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Assistant Director, Mr. Journal Makatangay. Good afternoon, Sir Journal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, 
Can I be heard, uh, John? Yes. yes, sir. We can uh, hear you loud and clear. Thank and you very much. Thank you very much for this very nice. Uh, it's really a, this will be a very simple and yet very informative uh, discussion on how to start and start a career as a market professional. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you with us, Sir Journal. The floor is yours. Thank you. Again, uh, this would be a very simple presentation on how to start a career in the Philippine stock market. Again, good afternoon to everyone. My presentation outline would be on two parts. Uh, I would start with introducing a very brief introduction about the Securities and Exchange Commission's mandate and functions. After which, I will have a very a brief but very concise explanation on how to start and apply uh, for being a market professional. We will be discussing the SEC certification programs. Thank you very much. Now, what is the SEC, the mandates and functions? Well, the SEC is the National Government Regulatory Agency charged with two things. We are the corporate registrar and we are the overseer of the capital market. We were created October 26 and 19, 1936 by virtue of Commonwealth Act 83, also known as the Securities Act. And we, the commission was tasked to regulate sale and registration of securities, exchanges, brokers, dealers, and salesmen. But the SEC started operations November 11 of 1936. So as I said, we are the registrar and overseer of the Philippine corporate sector. We supervise more than 500,000 active corporations and evaluates the financial statements filed by reporting companies, grantees of secondary licenses, and other corporations imbued with public interest. So SEC also develops and regulates the capital market, which is a crucial component of the Philippine financial system and economy. As it carries out its mandate, the SEC contributes significantly to the government revenues. Our vision statement, with the able support of our chairperson, uh, Emilio B. Aquino, by 2025, the SEC with its driven, highly trained and customer-centric team of professionals, equipped with innovative technology and automated registration and data management system, wants to be the premier investor champion and catalyst of a broadened and informed investor-based capital market and business sector considered among the best in the Southeast Asian region. As our mission, we are the gateway to doing business in the Philippines. We provide a competitive and secure environment for easy company registration, efficient capital market capital formation, and broad investor participation. We have our core values of integrity, professionalism, independence, accountability, and teamwork. As our service pledge to our stakeholders, we, the officials and employees of the Securities and Exchange Commission, guided by our values of integrity, professionalism, accountability, independence, initiative, and teamwork, pledge to serve you with a smile, ensure efficient in service delivery, and commit ourselves to address your complaints and satisfy you, our dear clients. Well, here is our organizational chart. As you can see, at the head would be the SEC chairperson and directly under him are the four commissioners. Of course, our, our chairperson is chairperson Emilio Biaquino and our commissioners, we have commissioners Efero Biamatong, JV Paul Francisco, Commissioner Kelvin Lee and Commissioner Carlo Bellio. Under, under the office of the chairperson, we have three uh, special offices. We have the office of the general accountant, office of the general counsel, and the office of the commission secretary. Now, as I said, SEC, looking at the organizational chart, we have different departments uh, doing 
roles as a company registration and capital market and supervision and development of the capital market. And we'll, we also have support services in support of our capital market advocacies. For the capital market, uh, capital company registration and capital market regulation, we have the markets and securities regulation department. We have the corporate governance and finance department. We have the company registration and monitoring department where we do primary registration and secondary registration as well. Our investigative arm, we have the enforcement and investor protection department. Going to the support services, my department is the economic research and training department. As you can see, it's connected by a dotted line because although my department is, a, is on support services, we also do a capital market uh, related function, which is the conduct of the examinations for market professionals. We also have the information and communications technology department, our IT department. We have our human resource and administrative department, and we have our financial management department. We also have our extension offices located in strategic cities around the Philippines. We have one in Baguio, one in Cagayan de Oro, one in Cebu, the other in Davao. We have one in Iloilo, Legaspi, Tarlac, and Zamboanga. And if you could see the one highlighted is our latest baby, our latest uh, uh, extension office located at Bacolod City. We also have satellite offices located in several uh, key uh, malls in Metro Manila, as well as in certain cities. But as you know, because of the pandemic, uh, our, our uh, satellite offices are currently closed. Well, I just, I'll just have to make a rundown of the different laws implemented by the SEC. Of course, I'll just go on the, the common, which is the Corporation Code of the Philippines. Uh, we have the Financing Company Act, the, the FIA or the Foreign Investment Act, Investment Company Act, Partnership Law. And uh, we have the Ominous Investment Code, Investment Houses Law. As you can see, the anti dummy Law, the Education Act of 1982, Retail Trade Liberalization Act, the Anti-Money Laundering Act, which uh, we are now undergoing uh, certain changes because we are being monitored by an international organization, the Securitization Act of 2004, the Lending Company Regulation Act, Personal Equity and Retirement Act for the PERA, the Credit Information System Act, the REITs or the Real Estate and Investment Trust Act, the micro, Microfinance Non-Government Organization Act of 2015. We have an act amending investment restrictions and specific laws governing adjustment companies, lending companies, financing companies, and investment houses cited in the foreign investment negative list. And of course, the ease of doing business and efficient Government Service Delivery Act of 2018. Now, I'll just like to give you an overview of the SEC and the different institutions, the capital market institutions, which we deal with. Of course, the Securities and Exchange Commission deals with the capital market institutions as well as the registered professionals. Under the capital market institutions, we have the exchanges, uh, which were given the self-regulatory organization status by the, by the SEC, meaning they, they are given certain leeways on how to run the backroom operations of their particular exchanges, subject, of course, to their, um, to, the, to the overseer function of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Again, for the exchanges, we have the Philippine Stock Exchange for the equities market, and we have PIDEX, the Philippine Dealing and Exchange for the, for the bond, bonds and uh, bond securities. And of course, we have the Capital Markets and Integrity Corporation, which is the, which was given the um, uh, SRO status also to look into the practices of uh, our stockbrokers and dealers. 
We also have the clearing and uh, the clearing agency and depository agency. Of course, we have the Securities Clearing Corporation of the Philippines for the equity, and we have the Philippine Dep Depository and Trust Company for the um, uh, bond for the PDEX. Now we have other market institutions. An example would be Regina Capital um, Capital Development Corporation, and we have the Alternative Trading System. Now, here is our interest for purposes of this particular webinar this afternoon. We have the securities companies and intermediaries. These are the uh, capital market organizations as well as the individuals which we regulate for them to buy and sell these capital market products. So I will be discussing uh, uh, these are all uh, the securities companies and intermediaries, but uh, as of now, the SEC has uh, certification examination for at least four of these uh, 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 market professionals, which I, I will be discussing later in my second part of my presentation. So we have the broker dealers, we have the GSED or the government securities eligible dealers. We have the underwriters, investment houses, mutual fund distributors, investment company advisors and fund managers, mutual fund companies. We have our, uh, the registered persons like the salespersons for the equities, salesperson for the fixed income, certified investment solicitors for mutual funds. And we have the associated person, the compliance officer for the equities market. Of course, we have other supporting institutions we have the transfer agents, we have the securities custodians, we have the registrars of uh, the QIBs and the credit rating agencies, we have property valuators and uh, the other investment houses branch. So this more or less gives you an overview of the different entities or institutions which the SEC deals with and which we regulate. And uh, this will be discussed in terms of licensing and regulation on the second part of this webinar. Thank you. Now, as of May 2021, here are the number of capital market institutions. For broker dealers and securities, we have 131. Broker in securities only, we have eight. Dealer in securities only, we have one. We have registered issuers of proprietary and non-proprietary shares, membership certificates and timeshares, we, we have four. Voice broker to securities, we have four. Investment house, we have 16. Investment house and GSED, government uh, service uh, securities eligible dealers, 11. Underwriters of securities of GSED, we have 12. We have ECA or investment companies, 12. Mutual fund distributor, 14. And transfer agents, we have 18. Now, equities and for the equities and fixed income, listed companies with PSE as of May 2021 is 272. And the total number of listed companies with PDS as of May 2021 is 49. Well, go, go, now going, going to the last part, I'd like just to share the recognition that the SEC has been receiving really through since uh, I would say, 2029, 2019, which is the, the where we successively and uh, been receiving various uh, recognitions here and abroad. First was in March of uh, 2019, wherein a plaque of honor by the Presidential Anti-Corruption Anti Commission was given to the Securities and Exchange Commission for innovative measures that contributed to the effective delivery of services to the public and the curtailment of corruption in government. SCC has been landing in the top 10 performing government agencies in the Makati Business Club survey. Actually, I think we've been in the hall of fame for landing and successive years as in the top 10 among the top performing government agencies. Of course, the SET takes pride as we got the Sustainability Reporting Award. This is an award from the International Standards of Accounting and Reporting, or the ISAR, which was given October 30 of 2019 in Geneva, Switzerland. 
The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development recognized the commission for promoting good corporate governance and sustainable business practices. Lately, we have uh, really had a grand slam on the Anti-Red Tape Authority Awards. We got an award for uh, uh, for uh, doing business compet as uh, the a, a, a basic award for doing business competitive risk competitiveness ranking mover for instituting the most number of reforms considered in the World Bank's Doing Business 2020 report. Likewise, we were cited by ARTA for our measures in protecting minority investors, which served as the big impact indicator award. And lastly, the most improved indicator of ease of doing business in the Philippines based on the World Bank's report. So we've got three awards from the Anti-Red Tape Authority uh, for really, which, which really uh, makes a great stand, as I said, for, our, our, for the commission landing in very good surveys since way back as, as the top performing government agencies. Here are the awards from Arta. And uh, lately, the, the Philippines uh, signed the first supplemental memorandum of understanding on cross-border offers of the uh, ASEAN because um, the Philippines joined the ASEAN financial cross-border funds uh, regulators from Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand have signed a supplemental memorandum of understanding admitting the Philippines as the latest signatory in the ASEAN Collective Investment Scheme. So this was last May 11 of 2021. And lately, uh, last uh, um, we received in last May 25, another international award. This award is uh, the SEC's this year's recipient of the Global Good Governance uh, 3G Award for Advocacy and Commitment to Corporate Governance Award. The London-based Cambridge International Financial Advisory recognized the SEC for its corp company, for its good governance, for corporations um, in the sixth 3G annual awards held last 25 of May, 2021. So these are the awards and these are, I gave you a brief overview of the Securities and Exchange Commission and how we've been performing as, as I said, the dual function of a corporate registrar and the overseer of the Philippine capital market. Now we go on to the SEC certification program. As I said, I will be discussing two things. We, I will be discussing on the SEC certification examination, and of course the SEC certification seminar. So what is the legal basis for, the, for SEC's regulation of brokers and dealers? Section 28 of the SRC states that no person shall engage in the business of buying and selling of securities in the Philippines as broker or dealer or act as a salesman or associate or associated person of any broker or dealer unless registered as such with the commission. No registered broker or dealer shall employ any salesman or any associated person who is not registered as such with the commission. So if you would, uh, if, we, if we could just go back and remind you, I discussed a while ago, the different capital market uh, participants that, are, that I mentioned. And this, I will be discussing the four, as I said, uh, market professionals that are being, um, that we, wherein we give uh, examinations as well as we give licenses. 
So who are the different market participants and professionals? Of course, we have the broker, who is a person engaged in the business of buying and selling of securities for the account of others. We have the dealer, or a person who buys and sells securities for his or, or her own account in the ordinary course of business. An associated person is employed full-time by the broker dealer whose responsibilities include internal control, supervision of, a, of employees, agents, salesmen, officers, directors, clerk and stockholders of such broker for compliance with the securities regulation code and its implementing rules and regulation. The salesman is a natural person hired to buy and sell securities on a salary or commission basis endorsed to the commission by the employing broker or dealer. Of course, there are other market participants and professionals. We have the government securities eligible dealer, or these are the persons or entity engaged in buying and selling of government securities, such as treasury bills, treasury notes, and treasury bonds. We have investment house and underwriters of securities, which are corporations engaged in the underwriting of securities of another person, including securities of the government or its instrumentalities. We have the transfer agent or any person who engages on behalf of an issuer of securities, among others, registering the transfer of securities, transfer of securities from one person to the other. So this is the role of the transfer agent. It's more of a recording officer. Of course, the exchanges, these are the organized marketplace that brings together buyers and sellers and executes trades of securities and our commodities. As I said, we have two, we have the Philippine Stock Exchange, we have the Philippine Dealing and Exchange for the, the PDEX for purposes of the uh, bond, uh, fixed incomes uh, and bonds. We have the clearing agency, just like a bank, and a person who acts as an intermediary in making deliveries upon payment to effect settlement in securities transactions. They are the ones who clear and make sure that the, the, the securities goes to the buyer and the, 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 the seller is being paid or vice versa. So it's a clearing agency. Now, we go to the certification seminars. As we said, this is a simple webinar just to inform you what do you have to do to start your career as a market professional? So the SEC gives certification seminars for phase one and for the associated person of a broker dealer or salesman of a broker dealer. So I will be discussing later phase one because phase one, this is the uh, the, the first stage wherein all interested market professionals would have to hurdle this examination. And upon passing this examination, they could now go to phase two, which I will be discussing later, which deals with the, a specific market professionals that they want to specialize in. So for the, for, for, uh, where, uh, this would be, I was just including phase one for purposes of what are the different web uh, seminars or now webinars that we give? So we give webinars for phase one and also for the associated person of a broker dealer and the salesman of a broker dealer. So this two uh, plus phase one, we give such webinars here at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now we go to the certification examination. As I said, all interested market professionals would have to take the phase one of the SEC certification examination. These are the different topics uh, uh, consisting of six modules. We have topics on the fundamentals of securities, economic principles and market theories. We have fundamentals of securities regulation. We have corporate governance risk management, and anti-money laundering. So these are the topics. Uh, and uh, we would be discussing later in the question and answer portion. Uh, you might ask, what are the components of this? Actually, uh, this, uh, this uh, phase is being reviewed now 
but in case you want to uh, ask it later on on the, the components of these different modules, we will be uh, willing to give you this on the question and answer portion. Now, going back to module, to, module, uh, to phase one, right now we have a consolidated examination wherein we have specific percentage of uh, a number of questions for each uh, of the six modules. So as you can see, uh, fundamentals of securities has the highest percentage with 40%, and this reflects to 48 questions. Economic principles and market theories is second with 42 questions. Fundamentals of securities regulation, we have 12 questions. For corporate governance, risk management, and anti-money laundering, uh, we have six questions each. So we have a total of 120 questions for phase one. The passing score shall be 65% based on the aggregate score. So I, again, 120 questions and the passing rate is 65%. Going on phase two, uh, which we call module seven, this, as I said, are the specific market uh, professionals where you would like to specialize in. But the thing is, you can only take this modules upon passing phase one of the SEC certification pro, uh, examination. So module 7A deals with the certification program for certified investment solicitors, which we call the mutual fund salesman. We have module 7B for certification program for equities security salesmen, which we call stockbrokers. We have the certification program for fixed income market salesmen. We have certification program for compliance officers or the associated persons. But this we give only to those in the equities market. So for module 7A, which is the cert, uh, sorry, for module 7B, the certification program for equity security salesman and module 7, 7D, this uh, certification examinations for phase two are solely for the equities market at the moment. Now, we also give certification program for proprietary and non-proprietary securities and timeshares, but this, has been put in on hold because SEC is currently reviewing our program for this particular market professionals. So if you ask what kind of uh, licenses do we give them, this will be answered in the next, by our next speaker right after me. Now phase one again consists of 50 questions, depending on your choice, of uh, examination and the passing score is 75%. Now, this is the last part of my, um, my lecture, which is on the registration process. As we say, we make it easy at SEC. As our chairperson would say, it's easy at SEC. So we make registration very simple. So we start with opening uh, the SEC website, www.sec.gov.ph. So this would appear. So if you would see in the arrow, you have to click into the icon which says Capital Market Professionals. Under this particular icon, you would see and click your particular interest. If your interest would be on the certification seminars, you just have to click certification seminars. If your interest would be on the certification examinations, just click certification examination. List of passers, the list of passers for both phase one and phase two are posted at the SEC website. And of course we have the different notices on uh, the capital on the certification program for market professionals, which we regularly post and update. So this is an example. Let's say you click. This is an example of a uh, the, uh, the 
the certificate uh, for phase one certification examination application form. This is downloadable, and you could just uh, print and uh, uh, fill up the same. So it's very simple. You just have to fill in the necessary details. So this would be for the certification examination for phase one. This is the certification examination for phase two. As we said, if you look at the arrow, you have to choose what certification program you're applying for. Will it be for a stockbroker? Will it be for a associated person? Will it be for a certified investment solicitor? Will it be for a fixed income salesman? As I said, the last part, which is the SEC uh, examination for proprietary and non-proprietary securities and timeshares is put on hold as of now. So if you would see it's written in the uh, registration form, the things to bring on examination day, notes on, uh, and uh, reminders for those taking the examination. And of course, uh, these are the warning on, of course, cheating and doing unnecessary uh, activities or uh, during the examination. So in a nutshell, this is a step-by-step -step process on how you would register for a certification uh, examination. So we just go to the SEC official website at www.sec.gov.ph, direct it to the capital market professionals icon, click the applicable services you want to avail. Will it be on licensing, certification seminars, certification examinations, list of passers and notices. Step three is for the certification examination. As I said, I've, I've already discussed the different, the two, the two uh, registration forms which are downloadable on our website. And step four, after submitting the duly accomplished application form and a scanned copy of a valid ID, you have to submit it to our official website, the certification at sec.gov.ph. You have to print the payment assessment form, which we call the PAF. And right now we have made it very easy for the uh, particular examinee because we have a lot of avenues for payment. You could go directly to the SEC uh, here at the PICC or at our uh, former uh, office in EDSA. We have an, uh, our former office there which also has uh, accepts payment. And of course, we have the online payment portal available for SEC. We have, you can pay on, uh, uh, we, we have several payment portals. And of course you can pay at also uh, the land bank branches. So after that, uh, you go on examination day and you present the photo or the scanned copy of your proof of payment and the application receipt to the examination proctor on the date of the examination. By the way, because of the pandemic, we now give examinations only here at the SEC head office at the PICC complex in Pasay City. Don't worry, we have a very good and IATF, uh, uh, IATF uh, uh, standard uh, examination room, examination rooms. So we give examinations every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And because of the IATF requirement, we only uh, can accommodate 10 examinees per examination day. But we are now looking, since we are now sliding to GCQ, so we are now looking on the possibilities of uh, giving our paper and pencil examinations, like what we do during our pre-pandemic uh, times, wherein we go to our different uh, extension offices and give the paper and pencil examination. We're currently looking into that, and uh, please uh, always make it a habit to open the SEC website and click on the capital markets icon, so you would be apprised of the latest notices on this. Now you take the examination and finish the examination and hopefully 
you pass the examination. That's what we want. And the examination results will be released three working days from the date of your examination. And it will be posted at the SEC website. So uh, um, phase two, I, I would just like to clarify, phase one has 120 items and the passing rate is 65%. And phase two has 50 items and the passing rate is 75%. Thank you very much. So I think this ends my presentation. This is a very simple, and this is just the first part, by the way. This is the first part of our uh, Adobe wherein you take the SEC certification examination and the certification uh, seminar. We would now go, after you pass, we now go to the licensing process. So uh, I'll, I'll back to you, Sir John. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Journal, for. Uh that a very comprehensive presentation. Ako, sir, ang sarap pong pakinggan. No? Uh, very clear ang pagka-deliver and very, uh, uh, very organized po yung, ano, yung presentation. And um, I already have a lot of questions for you and there are also questions that are typed in, but um, we will take some of the questions live later during our Q&A session after our second presentation. So now, let me introduce our second resource speaker this afternoon. He will uh, cover the licensing requirements and processes. Um, our second resource speaker is a security specialist under the SEC's Market and Securities Regulation Department. He is currently assigned in the licensing unit of the Company Registration and Monitoring Department. The said unit processes and releases the licenses of market professionals, including the certified securities representative and the associated persons. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Alvin Fundamera. Sir Alvin, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, John. Uh, good afternoon to the PSE host. Uh, AD Journal is with me right now. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope... Ma uh, they will understand as they understand how AD Journal uh, expressed this report. Uh, well, good afternoon to the to those who are watching the PSE stock market webinar, especially to the CRMD people who I'm sure are watching right now. Good afternoon, and uh, this afternoon I will be speaking about the licensing requirements of capital market participants. Siguro ito hinihintay ng marami. As well as the process of registration of capital market professionals in the licensing unit of the CRMD of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, the let me discuss the different capital market professionals na, na discuss na rin po ni AD Journal. The associated person The compliance officer, salesman, fixed income market salesman, and certified investment solicitors. Uh, the certified investment solicitors are employed under mutual fund distributors and investment company advisors na mga capital market institutions. The fixed income market salesmen are employed under investment houses, investment house dealing in government securities, underwriter of securities dealing in government securities, GZ, and voice brokers. The salesman, this is what they call the stock broker, gaya nga ng sabi ni uh, AD Journal. Ito yung mga, these are employed by broker dealers, broker, dealer and broker in proprietary shares. The terms and conditions for applicants for registration. Only natural persons can apply and be employed by a capital market institution registered at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Applicants for salesmen, certified investment solicitors shall be at least 18 years of age and applicants for associated persons officers shall be at least 21 years of age. Applicants for registration 
as capital market professionals must have no disciplinary history that would subject them to disqualification from registration under Section 29 of the Securities and Regulation Code. Ang usual na question po, if an individual is asking, pwede ba akong magka-license na ako lang mag-isa? The answer is no. You have to be employed under a licensed capital market institution. And the application is on be or your application be, will be in behalf of the institution. Bali, yung institution ang nag apply para sa mga capital market professionals. Registration of capital market professionals. An applicant applying for registration for the first time must have taken and passed the applicable examination within the last three years immediately preceding the date of his application. For example, an individual passed the certification exam 2016, kailangan magkaroon siya ng license bago lumipas ang 2019. Or the individual must take the exam again if three years will pass upon passing the first exam. No applicant for registration shall be registered unless he has completed the certification requirements. Except for compliance officers, since no examination yet, for compliance officers of GSEDs and other common CMIs included uh, an, an undertaking to take future exams will be included in their applications. Every registered company market professional who shall change his registration category during the year shall be assessed the appropriate fee for the issuance of a new license. Each registered capital market professional shall pay annual fee every November of each year of registration and must be cleared of all derogatory reports and cases. Every November, ang filing ng renewal ng annual fee because lately, the licenses that the licensing unit have issued were perpetual license and the filing and payment of annual fee shall be charged a fee for, for late filing and failure to pay in a ground to suspend registration. Failure to pay is a ground to suspend registration. Dahil nga, dahil nga po yung uh, license is perpetual, we will be issuing confirmation of payments yearly na Nang payment of annual fee shall be paid every November of each year para sa susunod na year ng kanilang renewal ng license. Conditions for continuing registration of capital market professionals. Observe at all times the provisions of Securities Regulation Code, Investment Houses Law, Investment Company Act, and all rules and regulations adopted there under an applicable exchange, clearing agency, and other SRO rules. These are the forms needed by the applicants para with their different uh, licenses na kanilang kukunin. Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission launched the CMPRS, which is the Capital Market Participant Registry System. This was launched uh, last November 21, 2017. And before, the capital market professionals and institutions were we're having the option to file online or manually, but now we, we are only accepting uh, uh, online applications. The CMPRS special features, registration of capital market professionals, the annual payment applications, 
and submission of notice of termination. The registration of capital market professionals and annual payment application is under the licensing unit of CRMD. And the submission of notice of termination is monitored and under the market securities and regulations department. The capital market institution must have an account in order to for their CMPs or their capital market professionals to apply online through our CMPRS. The CMPRS is a web-enabled system designed to manage online submission of applications, manage online evaluation, processing of applications of capital market participants, automatic generation of certificate of registration and confirmation of payment of annual fees, facilitate tagging, clearing of infractions as results of monitoring activities and real-time searching of registered capital market participants. Kapag binuksan niyo po yung capital market www.cmprs.sec.gov.ph you can see the active capital market institutions and capital market professionals at real time makikita niyo po sa website ng SEC uh, going back the the company must uh, comply with the forms like the undertaking, the secretary certificate, and the user designation form. Each capital market institution shall have their company representative who will be the authorized filer in the CMPRS. The system accepts maximum of three authorized filers or users. The user account request is subject for approval by the licensing clerk. Uh, just go to www.cmprs.sec.gov.ph, click request for account, search company name or SEC registration number, enter representative company profile, upload the CMPRS forms 123, submit request, and he or she will receive an email confirmation that his or her account in behalf of the company was approved and a tentative password will be given. The company representative may now log in, change the password and do necessary applications which the CMPRS offers. Ito po yung screen na makikita natin once na meron ng account yung inyong institution sa CMPRS. Pwede kang mag mag-apply ng capital market professional, pwede kang mag-apply ng annual payment every November, and the submission of notice of terminations which are monitored by the MSRD. The registration of the capital market, we'll click this one, the registered capital market professionals. You must create an application the personal details, license request, and, and submit the application. Encodes personal details refers to the application form of the applicant. License and requirements, what license the applicant are applying for. And upload the documentary requirements, which, I, which was discussed earlier, the application form, the applications form for each capital market professionals. The payment of the filing fee was also online. Uh, the licensing unit will, will issue the payment asses assessment form online through CMPRS. And these are the filing fees for every application of capital market professional. 
the basis of the filing fee, filing fee plus legal research fee, the basis is MC number three, series of 2007, plus a 30 pesos doc stamp notice issued by SEC on April 8, 2019. Encode and upload the proof of payment after payment. You must submit the hard copies of the documentary requirements and claim the certificate of registrations. An email confirmation will be sent to the company representative that the application for registration was approved and signed and ready for pickup and they may now submit hard copies of the uploaded documentary requirements, originally signed and notarized. These are samples of the licenses issued by the licensing unit of CRMD. For payment of annual fee, the payment of annual fee of the capital market institutions and professionals is every November of each year. Institutions and professionals who fail to pay, their licenses will be automatically inactive the next year. For professionals, the list will show who are the professionals qualified to be renewed. It means that they are the ones who pay the annual fee last year or new registrants before the period of annual payment. After selecting the data for renewal, update the list and you will move to the next step to verify the selected data. You have to upload these requirements for renewal, the SEC form NELET, the Notarized Endorsement Letter Annual Fees, SEC form T-List, the tab tabular list of applicants' annual fees professionals, and the application form, the surety bond for the broker dealers, and the SEC form 281 if applicable for branch offices of uh, capital market institutions. Step four, submit the application. Step five, payment of filing fees. The capital market institutions to be computed by MSRD. Salesman, fixed income market salesman and all other capital market professionals these are the filing fees, annual fees. Step six, encode and upload the proof of payment after payment. And step seven, submit hard copies of the documentary requirements and claim confirmation of payment of annual fees. This is a sample of the confirmation of payment of annual fee. Hindi na po tayo nag issue yearly ng certificate because the first certificate that an, an applicant, a CMI or a professional will receive is, is perpetual license. Perpetual license na po ang ini-issue ng CRMD para sa mga institutions and professionals. This is uh, licensing unit number. You may contact us with this number and email address. Uh, yes, and, uh, correction. You can you can reach cmprs.sec.gov.ph. Walang, tri walang triple W. Just, you can go to the SEC website and... Uh, you can search for CMPRS, cmprs.sec.gov.ph. That ends my report, report, Sir John, and I hope everybody's uh... Thank, you Thank you very, very much, much. Uh, Sir Alvin.
Maraming salamat po sa ating mga resource speakers, si AD Journal Makatangay and si Sir Alvin Pundamera, and of course, our panelists, Attorney Eunice uh, Dalis Salazar. Thank you for um, accommodating our request, and um, we hope that in the future, the PSC can again invite the SEC for other topics that we may cover, um, which will be, of course, of interest uh, to our uh, general viewers. And yes, um, to and our... Yes, sir. Sige po. And for your information, sir, John, a PSE is a partner already of the Securities and Exchange Commission in our SEC CAN program. And you are a regular partner. If you would notice in our webinars, the logo of PSE is there. So it's easy to collaborate. Sabi nga ng aming chairman, it's easy at SEC. You could always come and we could always have a collaboration on this. And uh, this would is really, gusto po ito. Ito po ang gusto talaga ng aming chairperson that we collaborate with our uh, fellow uh, with, with our regulated entities and with partners. Katulad din po ninyo, we want to reach out to people, lalo na po ngayong pandemic. And this is one way of doing it, collaborating with the PSC. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Journal. And thanks again to our resource speakers and to our panelists. And of course, the PSC is always proud and honored to be one of the pioneer campaign network partners for the SEC Communication Advocacy and Network or the SEC CAN. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank everyone for actively participating in this webinar. I'm sorry we couldn't answer all of your questions live because there's so many questions typed in, but um, we've already shared all the contact info. So if you need to get in touch with the SEC, just uh, email them directly. And of course, if you need to get in touch with the PSE, our contact info is 632-8876-4888. Or you may also email info at pse.com.ph. Please visit our new website, www.pse.com.ph for corporate disclosures, it's edge.pse.com.ph. And for investing materials, do visit the PSE Academy website, a new website we will be rolling out later this year. Like and follow our official social media accounts. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and we're also on LinkedIn. So in our future webinars, we will be sharing our LinkedIn handle as well. Download the PSE mobile apps um, for corporate information right at your fingertips. Download the PSE Edge mobile app. And of course, whenever there's an IPO, the PSE Easy is the mobile app for you. And that has been a learning experience, uh, lear full, full learning experience uh, provided to you by the PSE and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, our stock market webinar this afternoon entitled Starting a Career in the Philippine Stock Market. Again, this has been your host, John Garcia from the PSE's Market Education Department. Wishing you all a happy weekend. I'll see you again next time. Stay safe, everyone.